Good morning, everyone. Good morning. My name is Ms. Willingham, and today we are going to continue our or your discussion on figurative language. How many of you have heard about figurative language? Okay. How many of you have heard specifically about similes? So we've heard about that, so we're going to continue that discussion. We're also going to continue with our reading of Turtle in Par Paradise. Okay, one thing that we want to, to understand is that when an author writes a book, he writes a book for a reason. And in order for his readers to, uh, or, or her readers to understand that reason, he uses certain literary devices and certain literary techniques. One of those techniques or one of those devices that we're going to focus on and continue to focus on is figurative language, okay? So let's go ahead and begin. So what are we learning today? Today, we're going to learn how to interpret figurative language, including similes uh, and metaphors in context. Now notice, I've highlighted interpret figurative language, I've highlighted similes, and I've highlighted in context. I highlighted these because today, we're not going to focus on metaphors, okay? We'll get to that later, but today we're not going to focus on metaphors. So, by the end of the lesson, you all will be able to say, I can provide textual examples of a simile. So let me hear you repeat this sentence right here. I can provide a textual example of a simile. Very good. You will also be able to say, I can explain the impact of the simile in context. Let me hear you repeat that sentence. I can explain the impact very good. So before we move on, let me help you with a few words. Interpret. When you interpret something, you understand it in a specific way. So today, we're going to look at how the author uses similes and interpret what he means. We're going to understand how he used similes in a certain way, okay? Impact. The direct effect that something has on something else. So by using this simile, how did it affect me as a reader? What was the purpose of the author using that simile in, in, in context? Context, the words that are used within a certain word or phrase to help explain its meaning. So, when you look at all of the, the words inside of a book or on, in a paragraph, that's the text. How the words are used deals with the context. So we're going to interpret how similes um, impact what we read, okay? And another word that you're going to kind of learn today is literal. And literal means using words in their most usual or basic sense. Everybody say literal. 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 So it means using words in their most usual and basic sense. Everybody good with that? Yes. Okay, so we're going to move on. Why is it important for us to learn figurative language? Well, again, Authors use this technique in order to make a story more clear for, its re for, for his or her readers. It touches the five senses. It makes what we see more clear. It makes what we hear more clear. It makes what we smell, taste, and feel more clear because of the language that the author used. In the, in the writing. Does that make sense to everybody? Mm -hmm. How an author describes something, even in general conversation, how we talk, it helps us to make our thoughts more clear. And it makes it more interesting, okay? Now, how will I show what I know? You have two, um, a graphic organizer on your desk. We're going to use this graphic organizer for our guided practice. And we're going to use another graphic organizer for your independent practice that you'll receive when we get to that point. So the other graphic organizer you'll receive when you get to that point. I'll give it to you. Okay? You're also going to write your own simile when you, uh, when we get to the reflection piece, okay? All right. So, 
Everybody has heard about figurative language, so let's do a quick review. Figurative language is a word or phrase that, phrase that doesn't have its everyday literal meaning. I want you to pay attention to this chart right here. So, if I say it's raining very hard outside, that literally means that this is happening. So I can look out the window and I can see it actually raining really, really hard. That's the literal meaning, okay? But figurative is when words are used with a meaning that is different from the basic meaning. So, it's raining cats and dogs. Can cats and dogs fall out of the sky? No. Are you sure? Yes. Are you absolutely sure cats and dogs can't fall? Okay. Yes. Cats and dogs can't fall out of the sky. But it still means it's raining extremely hard. But this makes it more clear. It makes it more interesting. It makes it more clear. And it makes a reader understand just how hard it really is raining. OK? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. All right. So it's used by a writer for the sake of comparison or dramatic effect. And it makes stories more interesting. OK? All right. Now, let's look at a simile. A simile uses the words like or as to compare two unlike things to suggest they are alike. So, it's different characteristics of a simile. What's one characteristic? It uses what? Like or That's one characteristic. What's the second characteristic? Like Two things that are unlike. And what's the third characteristic? The so in order for me to say that a word or a phrase is a simile, does it have to fit all three of those characteristics? Yes. Yes. yes, it does. So if you thought that it did not, I want you to jot down on this paper a note to yourself at the bottom. In order for me to characterize, well, I want you to say that a simile has to have all three characteristics. If you did not remember that, now if you can remember that, you don't have to write it down. If you can remember that, you don't have to write that down. On the, on the one with the blue line at the top. Okay, really quickly. Tell your partner what three parts or what three characteristics a simile has to have. Tell your partner. Tell your partner. Your partner at the table. Okay, so somebody give me one characteristic. Like or. Like or ass. Raise your hand. What's the second characteristic? Comparative. Compare what? Two things are unlike. Unlike or unlike? Unlike. Two things that are unlike. And what's the third characteristic? Suggest they are alike. Suggest they are alike. You have to know that you have to have these characteristics because seeing the words like or as alone does not make something a simile. Okay? And I'm going to show you that in a second. Now, so, how do I identify a simile? Well, first, I see the word like or the word as. Then I say, okay, this might be a simile. Then, I see two unlike things being compared. And finally, I recognize the similarity suggested, the suggested similarity between those two things. Okay? So, first, what happens? I see the word like or as. What happens second? And what happens last? I recognize the similarity between the two things being compared. Very good. Those three things happen. So look at these examples. Life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. So I see like, two things being compared, life and chocolate. What's the suggested similarity? You never know what you're going to get. How many of you have ever had a box of Valentine's Day chocolates? Or, and you know how when you pick up the chocolate, it's all chocolate, but you can buy it into one and you'll see peanuts. And you can buy it into another one and it'll be caramel. You buy it into another one, it might be strawberries. But if you just look at it, you don't know anything but that it's covered in what? Chocolate. Well, just like you don't know what you're going to get out of the chocolate box, Life deals things to you that you don't know what's, what's going to happen. 
Her smile is bright as the sun. Two things being compared, smile and the sun. I see the word as and, and it's bright. That's the similarity between the two things. Lastly, my brother is stubborn as a mule. I see the word as, two things being compared, brother and mule, and what's stubborn? Stubborn brother. But the stubborn is the the similarity. Stubborn is the similarity. Okay. Now remember to pay attention to the characteristics. You look just like my mother. Do I see the word like? Yes. Yes. However, do I see two things being compared? No. Well, kind of. Let's hold on. You and mother. I do see you and mother. But remember that a simile is a form of figurative what? Language. language. And figurative language is not literal. Can somebody literally look like my mother? No. Yes. 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 Do I look like Miss Woods? Yes. yes. A little bit. So you can literally look like somebody else. Okay? If I showed you a picture of my mom, I literally look like my mother. How many of you look like your mom? Or look like your dad? So if somebody said, what's your name, sweetheart? If somebody said, Sade, you look like your dad, is that the truth? Can it literally happen? Can it actually happen? It can actually be the case. So the reason this is not um, a simile is because it's not um, figurative. It's literal. And two people are not unlike. Okay? Unlike would be like comparing a box to a shoe, okay? Last year, my sister dressed as a princess for Halloween. I see the word as, but can my sister have really dressed as a princess for Halloween? Yes. Could that be the case? I can, I can have a picture of it. So again, this is literal and not figurative. My friend and I like riding the bus. Do I see the word like? Yes. Now here, is anything being compared? No. No. So no, if, it's, if it's not being compared, not it's not a simile. Okay? So just because you see the word like or as, that does not mean that it is a what? Simile. You have to have these three characteristics before it is a what? Simile. Okay. So. How can similes impact the text? Just like figurative language makes it more interesting. It can, it can um, tell a reader a little bit more about what the author is trying to say, emphasizes a writer or speaker's thoughts, and it reveals more about the plot. It reveals more about the story and the events that take place. So because we're in fifth grade, we no longer just say this is a simile. Now we look at why is the simile important in this part of the, of the text, okay? So you ready to identify some similes in, 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 in context? Yes. Okay, so we're going to practice. Everybody, I want you to take out your copy of Amber on the Mountain. Amber on the Mountain is a story about um, a little girl who lives in a beautiful but lonely place until one day a friend of hers arrives. So we're going to see how the author used the simile. Now as you take out the story, I want you to also take out your graphic organizer because you're going to write down the examples as you read, okay? I'm gonna give you one. Who else needs a, a, the graphic organizer? Can you pass, what's your name, lady? Okay, pass one back. You can write your name on it. Pass it back. Okay, now, I want you to choose a, well, let me, let me do it for you. So, you hold, put this on your desk, you have that in your hand. It's on your desk. Who has the card? So this card is on your desk, and the card is on your desk. All right. So when I tell you to come up to use the card, I want you to. So I'm going to show you how to identify a simile in the text, and then look at what or determine what the impact is on the reading. Everybody ready? Yes. 
Okay, so flip the paper up so you can read along with me. Amber on the Mountain by Tony Johnston, and the paintings are by Robert Duncan. So, Amber lived in, on a mountain so high, it poked through the clouds like a needle stuck in down. Trees bristled on it like porcupine quills, and the air made you giddy. It was that clear. Still, for all that soaring beauty, Amber was lonesome, for mountain people lived scattered far from one another. Now, I saw the word like twice. So now that I've seen the word like, something in my head says that I may see a what? I may see a simile. So let me think about this. I see the word like. So then I ask myself, do I see two unlike things being compared? The very first sentence, I see a mountain being compared, a mountain poking through the clouds being compared to a needle stuck in down. So, my comparison is the mountain poking through the clouds and the needle stuck in down. Now, how did that impact the text? Well, it tells me about the setting, okay? It tells me about the setting. Not only does it tell me about the setting and the beauty of the setting and gives me a picture of the setting, but even though it's so beautiful, it says that Amber is still lonely, okay? So it also tells me a little bit more about Amber. Now, I see another, the word like again, trees bristle on it like porcupine quills. So I look at my characteristics. I see the word like. Do I see two things being compared? Yes. 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 Who has the card? All right, come on up and tape it to the, to the board. What two things are being compared? Trees and porcupine quills. Trees and porcupine quills. And like the very first one, it tells me a little bit more about the set. Okay, does that make sense to everybody? Yeah. All right, so we've identified it and we've told the impact. So turn the page. All right, so once a man came on horseback to teach the people to read and write, how Amber longed to read and write. Books would be good company, but mountain life was too hard for the man. He left his supplies behind and skedaddled before winter came. One day, another man came with a crew to build a road. His wife and daughter, Anna, came too. Amber's granny cotton told the man straight out, you can't build a road here. Folks will roll clean off it, like walking up a wall. Uh-oh, I see the word, like. I see the word like. That's my first characteristic. Now that I see the word like, I have to see if two things are being what? Compared. Compare. And two things are being compared. The folks, so I see the word like. Two things being compared, the folks and walking up the wall. And what's the similarity between those two things? How they will roll off, okay? so. Who has the two things being compared? Come tape it up. Now, am I done? Nope. No. I have to determine, well, why did the author choose to write this like this? He wanted us to know just how skeptical Granny was about building a road. Did, did Granny think that the road would work? No. No, she didn't. So who has the impact? Somebody re read the impact out loud for me. Yes. Very good. The granny doesn't think that the role will do will work. Okay. We're gonna read one more page before you do it on your own, and put it next to it on impact. So now I know that that's a simile. Okay. Now Amber has seen Anna with her family entering their way up the mountain. She wanted to be friends, but Amber was shy. I will say hey to her when the time is right, Amber thought. Meanwhile, she watched Anna biding her time. One day, Amber was watching. Anna lay flopped on her stomach in a meadow reading a book. 
The sky was streaked with morning. The air was warm. The grass hummed with bees. Suddenly, up jumped Anna, shouting, once upon a time, and hopping around crazy as a doodlebug. Amber decided the time was right to say, hey, what word do I see? I see ads. Now, so, I see the word ads. Now I have to ask myself, are two things being compared? Yes. Yes. So what's being compared? Anna and the doodlebug. Anna and the doodlebug. So I see the word ads. Two things being compared. And what's the similarity between Anna and the doodlebug? <laughs> Jumping around, hopping around crazy. Hopping around crazy. So because all of I see these three things, is this a simile? Yes. Yes, it is. Who has what's being compared? Very good. And who has the impact? OK. Tape it up for me. Put it under. Like right there. Okay. So, before I have a simile, or know I have a simile, I have to identify these three what? Characteristics, right? Now, I've shown that I can provide textual examples of a simile. When you identify these three characteristics and you choose and determine that that's a simile, you're now showing that you can, can provide textual examples of a simile. So now, I want you to practice it. When we tell why the simile is used, we're showing that we can explain the impact of the simile on the text, all right? So now it's going to be, I'm, I'm gonna show you one more. So. Somebody read um, the first two lines. Um, go ahead. What's your name, sweetheart? Tiffany. Yes. Go ahead, Tiffany. Hey, she called. Are you crazy? Sure. Anna called back crazy with the spring. Hey, yourself. What are you shouting, asked Amber. A story from my book about a princess spinning gold. Might I hold it, Amber asked? Sure. Who wants to read next? Uh, go ahead. She examined. Okay, stop right there because I see the word as. So because I see the word as, I might have assembly on my hands, right? So now I have to do what? What do I have to see next? Go ahead. Are two things being compared? So I look and I say, okay, I see that Amber took the book as if it were a fine and breakable cup. So the book is being compared to a cup. So I see two things being compared. And finally, what do I have to find if there's a what? If something is similar. Well, what's similar between the book and the cup? That they are fine and breakable. So I have these three characteristics. So that means that I provide textual examples of assembly because this is a what? Is this a simile? Yes. yes, it is. Now, this tells us a princess. Truly, she asked. Yeah. What to what want to read it? I don't know how Amber said. There's no school hereabouts. I forgot, said Aunt Anna. She stared at Amber. A stubborn look came into her eyes. Amber Amber giggled. You look like our mule rockhead. When old rockhead looks balkany, he's up to something sure. Now Notice that these are in two different sentences, okay? Do you notice that this is two different sentences? Yes. Now, do I see the word like? Yes, yes, I do. You, or Anna, is being compared to the mule. And what's the comparison? The word balkany. Now, balkany, to balk is to unwilling to accept an idea. I-T-Y is a suffix that means um, the quality of, so Anna was unwilling to accept the idea that Amber couldn't read, so she wanted to help her. Now, 
all of my characteristics fit, so I have a simile here. I want you in your groups to read the rest of this page, and there is one more simile on this page, and I want to see which group can find it first. Well, you have to go through the characteristics. You have to prove. I need to see you talking. I need to see you talking to each other. I need to see you. I need to hear you talking to prove it. Why is it one? Why is it one though? You know, you know why? You tell me why. Okay. No, 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 no. Just work together. Okay. Is it what? What do you think? You sure? No. No. Just because this one right is over there. If you can hear my voice clap once, if you can hear my voice clap twice, I want you to think about something. Remember, two unlikely people I want you to think about something. Remember, Two unlike things being compared. Remember that it's two unlike things being compared. Don't worry about being first. Worry about being accurate. Okay? Now, who believes that they have the answer? All right. So what's the first thing that, I, that, that triggers me that I see a simile? Give me your name, babe. Yeah. So now, what triggers to you that you see a simile? Okay. So... I see the word as. So now, next I have to see if two things are being compared. What, to, does anybody see two things being compared? Yes. Okay, let me go, what's, what's your name back here? Yeah. Shari. Shari. What two things are being compared, Shari? Uh, Anna and Amber compared to two doodle bugs. Right, Anna and Amber compared to two doodle bugs, or they. Very good. Now, what is the last thing that I have to find for this to be a simile? Um, last thing, somebody I have not heard from. Last thing I have to find is the simil the what? The similarity. What's similar between Anna and Amber, or they and the two doodle bugs? Crazy, twirling crazy. Very good. So, is this a simile? Yes. 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 Now, I can provide textual examples of a simile because you've just identified the characteristics. Now, why did the author use that simile? What did it do for you as a reader? Why did the author use that? Why did he say that they were twirling around crazy as a doodle bug? Tell each other really quickly. Why would Okay, if you can hear my voice clap once, you can hear my voice clap twice. Who knows why? Who wants to give, give me a reason as to why the author may have used this simile? Right here. Because it made it more interesting and it described it as a doodle bug. Right. And it made it seem like they were crazy as two doodle bugs. Okay, so it made it more interesting and it made it seem like they were two doodle bugs. What else? How, well, how else was this? Why else was this used? It gave you a better understanding of what? Of how they were twirling. So it created an image in your mind of just exactly what they were doing, right? Okay. So I want you all to practice. Now, you see the four blank squares? Okay? I want you all to use this. Um, the rest of the book to find a two similes. How many are you going to find? Two. two. I want you to find two similes for me, okay? So, when you find your simile, you're going to first identify the word like or as. Like then you're going to see what two things okay. are being compared, and then you're going to find the similarity. So, you're going to write the simile to the right. 
write the two things being compared in the middle, and then tell me what it did for you as a reader that the author wrote that simile. Okay? Huh? No. You don't have to copy these first. Go ahead and finish reading where we left off with your group. And so you can take turns reading, and I want you to find me two similes. Go ahead and begin. Okay. Okay, you go ahead and read that. So we can move up. So we can, um, it doesn't matter. Go ahead and read. Okay. okay, so you will write this sentence. After that, Anna and Amber stuck to each other like birds. Then you will write here, Anna and Amber and birds. And then why did they do that? To tell how close they were. Okay? Don't forget that, I, okay, now that you wrote that down, what two things are being compared? Not being stuck like this, the two things. So Anne and Amber and Bird. So write that here. So write Anne and Amber and Bird. Got it. Now don't forget, you also have to tell the impact. I can't explain the impact of the simile in the text. Why were why why is that a, a simile in that particular place in the text? The key word is stuck. If they stuck together, even if you don't know what birds are, if they stuck together, that means that they were really what? They were really close. So that simile was used to tell just how how what? How close and how they connected. And in amber and burn. So the key word is stuck. When you find the impact, the key word is stuck. So it tells the reader just how what. About five more minutes. Yes, they are friends. And you know why you how you know that they're friends? Because, because they stuck together like birds. So that simile lets you know just how 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 close they are. Yes. I can't hear you. No, I want you to no. No, you don't have to circle it. What you can do is tell me what your things are being compared. So Anne and Amber and what? What are they being compared to birds? Okay, we have five more minutes. Okay, so write it down. Not just reading, but learning to read to very good. So write the whole simile and then go to the next one. Learning to read, but that's right. I didn't know what the impact is. You found 
another one. Are you familiar? Like the they are good. Write it down. If you find more than two, that's that's good. Write it down. Right, and then what does that do to you as a reader? So, where is it? These marks are like chicken tracks in our yard. Now, chicken tracks are big or small? Chicken, little chicken feet. Small. So she's talking about the reading. She's looking at, at the reading. So do you think that a person will understand how to read a chicken track? You, so if you saw a chicken, you, you will understand how chickens communicate with each other? No. So she's talking about just how difficult it is to learn how to do what? Read. Is that a simile in Walmart? Oh, okay. That's what I need the discussion to be about. Okay, if you can hear my voice, clap once. If you can hear my voice, clap twice. All right, somebody give me the first simile that they found. And when you found, when you found the simile, I need you to be able to tell me why it is a simile. I have not heard from you, sweetheart. So tell me. Yeah, what's your name? Shakiri. Go ahead. Tell me what um, the first simile you saw is. Anna and Amber stuck to each other like birds. Anna and Amber stuck to each other like birds. What two things are being compared? Anna and Amber and birds. Now, let Shakiri tell me what is the impact on you as a reader. What does that simile do for you as a reader? Shakiria, read me what you wrote. It tells how they're like really um, close together. Right, it tells how they're really close together, what good friends they are. So, Shakiria saw the word like, she saw the two things being compared, and then she saw the similarity. What was the similarity? How they were what? Stuck. How they stuck together. So all those three things are identified. Is that a simile? Yes. Yes, it is. So she was able to provide the textual example. And then she told me that the reason that the author wrote it was to express how close um, Amber and Anna had become. So she was also able to explain the impact of the simile on the text. Right? Yes. Did everybody get that? Yes. Did everybody get the impact? Yes. Give yourselves a hand. Nope. Give yourselves a hand. Thank you. Okay. Very good. Give me one more example. One more example. Um, I want somebody who I have not heard from. Who have I not heard from? <laughs> I haven't heard from you. You're right. What's your name? Huh? Okay, give me, go ahead and tell me your simile. The marks are like the chicken scratch on our yard. The marks are like the chicken scratch on our yard. What two, first of all, what word did I see? Like. Are there two things being compared? Yes. What two things are being compared? Marks and chicken scratch. Marks and chicken, chicken scratch. Tracks. Tracks. Marks and chicken tracks. Now, let me tell you something about this simile. Look at the next sentence. It says, I know for a fact chickens don't write notes to each other. Are you certain these letters mean something? That tells me what the similarity is. It means that the letters look like they are a bunch of gibberish a bunch of chicken scratch, words that she cannot understand, okay? 
Sometimes the similarity may be found after you actually see the simile. So you have to be careful with what you see. Okay? So is that a simile? Yes. yes. The impact of it, if Anna is saying that the words look confusing to her, why is that simile used? Okay, tell me why that simile is used. If Anna is saying that the words look like chicken scratch, Tiffany, why is that simile being used? What? Because she didn't understand what she was reading. So the author wanted the reader to know just how confusing reading or learning to read was for Amber. Does everybody understand that? Yes. So we provided a textual example of a simile, and then we also explain the impact of it on the story. Are we okay with that? Yes. Good job. So put that to the side for me. Now, I want you to pause really quickly. And on your blue sticky notes that are on your desk, I want you to think about what our goal was for today. We wanted to interpret figurative language, including similes and metaphors in context. Focusing on figurative language, similes, and, and, and how, they're, how similes are used in context. You need a blue sticky note? So, what I want you to tell me is, on a scale of one to three, with one being I understand, two being I still have some questions, and three being I don't quite understand, write down a number of your comfort level with what, with what we've learned. Do you understand? If you do, write a one on your paper. Do you still have a few questions? If you do, write a two on your paper. If you don't understand and you still need some help, write a three on your sticky note. Go ahead and do that for me now. Write a one, a two, or three. One, I understand. Two, I don't understand. I mean, I'm sorry, two, I have a few questions. Three, I don't quite understand. Yes. No, just write the number. You don't need to write your name, just write the number. Okay, now, um, now, take out Turtle in Paradise. How many chapters have we read so far? Three. 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 Now, in chapter four, on pages 34, 35, and 38, you will find similes. In chapter four, on pages 34, 35, and 38, you'll find similes. Now, I want you to turn to page 32 for me really quickly. Have you all read chapter four yet? No. Okay. Okay, so we read to page 38 so far. Turn to page 32. Let's review page 32 really quickly. I'm going to read something for you. Everybody thumbs up if you're at page 32. Okay. Kermit looks at me. They like to hide in dark places. I see the word like. However, I don't see two things being compared, and I don't, because I don't see two things being compared, I don't see a similarity. And because I don't see a, a two things being compared, it's not a what? Simile. When you get to a novel, when you get to a novel, you'll see the word like or as probably a lot of times, okay? But every time you see it doesn't mean that it's a what? Simile. What do you have to do in order to determine if it's a simile or not? Raise your hand if you know the answer to that question. If you know what you need to do in order to determine if it's a simile or not, raise your hand. All right. Um, everybody point to what you need to do. Okay. 
Okay, so the first thing I need to do is the next thing I need to do is and then I need to recognize very good. So quietly on your own, I want you to make a chart that looks like this on your own paper or actually turn it over on the back of your graphic organizer and just follow the line on the back. And at the top, you're gonna write simile, comparison, and impact. I've given you, if you can hear my voice clap once, everybody look up, at, look up at me. I've told you what pages the similes are on. You read up to page 38, so that's actually perfect. Go to page 34, Go to page 34, find the simile. Go to page 35 and do what? Find the simile. And then go to page 38 and do what? Find the simile. When you find the simile, write it down. Then write the two things being compared. Then write the impact. OK? All right. Go ahead and begin. On, and this one is on your own. Here, all you're going to find are three, there are one, two, three, four similes. So you only need spaces, only need four spaces, really. So don't focus so much on the drawing. Focus on finding the simile. So open it up to page 34. I need to see some books open to page 34. And start to read and find your example of the simile on page 34. Page 34. Let me see who finds the first simile first. Have a seat right here, buddy, baby. Right? So 
So Amber lives on a mountain so high, and poked in the clouds like a needle stuck in there. I see the word light. And so I say, well, are two things being compared? Well, the mountain poking through the cloud is being compared to the needle stuck in there. Okay, and the similarity is the position or how the how it looks. Trees bristle on it like porcupine quills. Well, I see the word light. Are two things being compared? Trees and porcupine quills. And what's what's the similarity? The word bristle. Bristle means how they poke out. You know, you know what a porcupine is? Okay, so how they poke out. So the trees were on the mountains poked out like porcupine quills, okay? And so the other thing that we're doing is looking at the significance, why the simile was written. The author wrote this so that the reader would know how the setting looked. So the impact is he, he helps the reader understand the setting, and then it goes on to say, and the ear may be hit. That it was that clear. Still, for all that strong beauty, Amber was lonesome. So even though the mountains and the trees were so pretty, the character was still lonely. So the similes helped me understand the um, it helps me understand the setting, but it also helps me understand how lonely the character is. Okay. It also helps me understand how lonely the character is. Okay. So. What I want you to do is, do you understand similes? Mm -hmm. Okay, so all I want you to do is read this and underline some of the similes that you see for me. Okay. Baby crying and being tortured. So baby crying and being tortured are being compared. And so why would he write that? Why would the author say that? You know what it is to be tortured? That's when like to, to be beat really bad. So it can be hurt really bad. So why is he doing that? To tell us just how what how hard the baby's crying, how upset the baby is by it. Yeah. Right, baby crying and torture, that's right. Yep, that's exactly right. I'm coming around and I'm noticing you all have seen Seem to have seen the first simile. Yep. Thirty-four. There is one simile on page thirty-five. Two on page thirty-four. One on page thirty-five. Right. I see the word light. Now look over here. Do you see light? Okay. All are Okay. Now, clap twice. Remember that figurative language is something that means, words that mean something different than the literal meaning. So if you see two things being compared, if you see as or like, and you see two things being compared, but what you read can actually take place, it's not a simile because it's literal, okay? Yes. Two unlike things being compared. Yes, sir. Is Wait a minute. I don't like babies is not comparing anything. Very good. Okay, he was next and then I'm coming to you. Okay, thank you, baby. Sorry. Right. So, let me answer one more question, then we're going to move on.
Turtle in Paradise. And we're going to continue to talk about how different literary devices impact our understanding of the story. But our reading block is almost over, so we want to wrap up, and we'll ha you'll have an opportunity to finish this. So for a couple of seconds, I want you to put your pencils down for me. And then I want you to take out a piece of paper and write your name, today's date, and your teacher's name on it for me. Take about two minutes to do that. A blank piece of paper, your name, today's date. my voice clap once. You can hear my voice clap twice. I want you to do this quietly so that we can do it quickly. Your name, today's date, and your teacher's name. And then I want you to write a number one. Skip, skip a few lines. Write number two. Skip a few lines and write number three. Your name, today's date, your teacher's name, one, skip lines, two, skip lines, three, skip lines. When you're done, put your pencil down and look at me. Are we ready? Two more seconds. One, two. Okay, everybody look at me. Even if you're not ready, you can finish it in a second. All right, we're gonna review what we did today. Figurative language is a word or phrase that does not have its normal, everyday, literal meaning. A simile uses the word like or as to compare two unlike things to suggest that they are alike. And authors use figurative language in order to emphasize their thoughts or feelings or express their thoughts or feelings and for the sake of comparison and then for dramatic effect to make it more interesting, to make a story more interesting. Okay? I want you to do me a favor and write your own simile, okay? Now, let me show you how to do that. I know that a simile uses like or as and two things have to be compared and they have to have a similarity. So, let's say I want to say, I know that my brother's room is messy. So, what two things are messy? What two things are messy? No, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Put your hands down. I'm gonna make up my own, because I want you to make up your own. So, my brother's room is messy, so I'm gonna say a pig sty in my brother's room. A pig sty is a place where pigs live, and pigs live in mud and slop. So, I'll say that my brother's room is like a pigsty. The second thing that I need to do is describe the characteristics that make my example a simile. Well, brother, well first of all, I'm sorry, I see the word like. Then, brother's room, or not even, I don't even have the right brother, room, and pigsty are being compared. And the commonality, the similarity, 
is that they are both messy. So now, then I'll say, describe a situation in which I would use the simile that I've written. Well, imagine that mom told us to clean up before she got home from work, right? And mom is almost on her way, is on her way home, but my brother's room is so messy that we may get in trouble because he just won't clean up. So, if I say, um, my brother's room is just like a pigsty, I'm emphasizing or I'm stressing just how dirty my brother's room is in a time where mom really wants, it, wants the house to be what? Clean. clean. So I'm stressing just how much work we have to do before mom gets home. And it doesn't have to be that um, detailed, but where or in what situation would I use this simile? I would use it in order to tell my brother just how dirty his room is. Okay, so to emphasize to my brother or tell my brother how dirty his room is. 